Hello, welcome to your second video on S1. Okay, so we're going to take uh, a few ideas that Dr. Young's introduced you um, and take them a little bit further and apply them in a slightly different situation. Okay, so you might be familiar with what the median is. So we usually go for medians, middle number we might say when we're like first get encounter it, but actually it's what's going to split the data into two pieces. So if we've got all our data and we split it into two pieces, the median's in between them. So it might be an actual value in the data set, or it could even be in between a couple of values. But it's the number that splits it up into two sections. Okay. Well, say we want to split our data up into quarters. Okay. Um, so we use quartiles to do this. So we're going to split this data up into four sections. Fab. And the median is obviously in the middle, split up from this half and this half. And this barrier here, which splits up this lower quarter, we call the lower quarter. So there's a value here that will split this data up, so we've got a quarter this side and three quarters it above it. And, unsurprisingly, we call this one the upper quartile. Now what you might not have seen before is the notation for this. So, lower quartile will quite often go for Q1, medium will go for Q2, and yet upper quartile Q3. So the first, second, third quartile, okay? Three values that split it up into four pieces. Right, well, let's use this idea and split some data up. So I've got a list of data, and I'm going to put it in order, because that's usually a good idea. Um, then I can actually find halfway and find quarterway and, and so on. Now we could go back and start crossing things off either side, but then we might come into some problems with the quartiles. So this method, I'm going to use four pots. I want to imagine putting the data into these four pots. Okay? So, okay, well let's see how many bits of data I've got all together. Now if you count these up, then we've got 13 bits of data. Okay, so if I get 13 bits of data and I split that into these four parts, we might have a slight problem. Now, you can probably tell that in primary school we might say 30 divided by 4, you might get 3 remains of 1. And I'm going to use that notation here. Okay? So, in each part there will be 3 bits of data. And that makes 3, so that 12 bits of data. Now, where am I going to put that remainder? Well, it kind of makes sense to put it here. Okay? Because that makes it nice and even. If I put it all here or here, it'd be lopsided. So that makes sense. So I'm saying I want to put the first three bits of data, the first three numbers here, then the next three here, then one there, then the next three, then the next three. And we can see this looks very similar to my picture beforehand. So this would be the lower quartile, Q1. To be the median Q2, and here we're going to have the upper quartile Q3. Okay, so it looks like Q1, well, there's three values in there, so one, two, three. The fourth value is in there, so I'm going to say this is the 3.5th value, and that means somewhere between the third and fourth value. Okay, well, I can probably find that. One, two, third value, and the fourth value, so in between there. Well, between 3 and 3, well, we'll go for 3. So Q1 is 3. The lower quartile is 3. The medium is a bit easier. We've got 3 bits, 3 more, so that's 6. The seventh number is the median. Okay? That's easy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? So it's 5. Right, and now we can find our upper quartile. Same way, we've got three bits there, three bits there, one there, and three there. So all together we've got three, six, nine, ten numbers, and then three after, make 13, that's great. So we've got somewhere between the tenth number in here, and then the eleventh number will be in there. So I want to say it's the 10.5th number. Okay. So let's have a look where that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there's the eleventh number, so it's somewhere in between there. It turns out it's just going to be 7 again, very similar to this one. Okay, so hopefully that's a good idea of how to split up data um, if it's just in a list using the four pots method. Put four pots, it's like putting the data in four pots the best you can. Now I know what you're thinking. What about the remainders? They might be a bit different. Okay, well this has got remainder 1, what if remainder 2 or remainder 3? What if there's no remainder? Well, on your note sheet, you can see that I've done a situation where n is 13, I might say, n being the, the number of bits of data. Okay? Well, let's have a look at some other situations. Okay? So n is 13, 
we did 13 divided by 4, which share 30 into these four parts, and we said, well, we will get 3 in each one, remainder 1. So 3 in each one. And that spare one we put there. Okay? And it's 14. 14 divided by 4 will be 3 and 2 left over. Okay. So this time I put the 3 in each box. And I've got 2 left over. Well, I think it makes sense if I put the two spare ones, one there and one there, that I'll kind of share them out the best and split the data up the best. Okay? And it's 15. Well, if I do 15, divide that into four parts. Well, 15 divided by 4, well, it's going to be 3, remainder 3. How you can work that out in your calculator, you probably get 3.75. It's 3 and 3 quarters. So that 3 and the 3 quarters is like the remainder. Okay. So in this situation, you can make a note of this on your sheet. The three remainders, I'm going to put one in each gap. Okay? And it's 16, well 16 divided by 4, that's nice and easy, okay? Because that's just 4. So we say it's going to be 4 in each part. Okay, brilliant. Now let's have a look where the quartiles are and the median is, specifically for these ones. So we looked at this, we said, well that's 3, the fourth value would be in there, so this would be the, the 3.5th value for Q1. The median was the seventh value, it was three, six, seven. And we've got three, six, nine, another one there, ten. Oh, so the tenth value's in there, eleventh value's in there, ten point fifth value's in here. Okay? Now you can go through the same method here. This one is the fourth value. So that'd be your Q1 if you had 14 items, you look for the fourth value. Okay? So this one will become a bit of an awkward one. We've got three. 4, 5, 6, 7, ah, so that's going to be 7 point fix. That's where the median or Q2 would be. And then this upper one here, well, 3, 6, 9, don't go about this one here, 10, that's the 11th one. Notice that sometimes it's the whole number when you've got one in the gap, but if it's in between and there's nothing there, you have to go between two values. So 7 point fifth between the 7th and 8th. Okay, let's quickly do these ones then. You'll find this one's going to be the fourth value. Three, four. And then this one will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the eighth one. So in that list of data, you'd look, 15 pieces of data, you'd look for the eighth one, that'd be your Q2. Fourth one would be your Q1. And we did this one the same way. So three, six, nine, ten, eleven bits of data, that's the twelfth one there. So you look in your list for the twelfth one. And the last thing, if you had 16 pieces of data, then you can go and have a look in this one, and it'll be all 0.5. So this one will be the 4.5th value. It's 4, 8, so this will be the 8.5th value. 4, 8, 12, so this will be the 12.5th value. And that will give you quartiles. And what we're doing, we're trying to find values that help split our data up into four chunks the best we can. Okay? And using this symmetry, is the best way we've got to. Now if you have a look on your sheet, you should have them, you fill them in as we've gone through, there's a question for you to have a look at. You're also going to find as well as the quartiles, the mean and the mode, just like in the last lesson. Okay, right, I'll be back in a moment and we'll go over and these things are slightly different when you're looking at a table. Hi, right, welcome to the second part of the video uh, where we're going to take the ideas about quartiles and apply them so when we've got data in a table. Okay. So this question is about Rebecca and shirt sizes. She's gone around and she's recorded a load of shirt sizes. Um, and this is a table that shows the results. Um, number of students, frequency, F for frequency. So this is three, that means that three students had 15, I think it must be inches on their neck size, okay? X is the, this variable we're using this time. 17, 15.5, 29, 16, and so on. Now, if you wrote them out as a list, which you could do, that would say there was three that had 15, 15, 15, 15. 17, 15.5. And hang on, 15.5, you'd have a massive list. So you can see why they put it in the table. Okay. Now, if we're looking at medians, quartiles, we're going to have to deal with how many bits of data there are altogether. 
And to help us with that, I'm gonna, I could just add up the frequency column, and I think it gives me 95 at the end, but I'm actually going to do a cumulative frequency column because that's going to really help us out later on. Okay, so cumulative frequency is something you've probably seen at GCSE, and it's just a running total. I'm going to use CF, abbreviates nicely, and then I can say, well, in this first group, there's just the three people that were 15. And then I'm going to write down 20, and that's come from saying, well, the 17 in the next group, add that onto the three that were in the group before, and there's 20 people that were 15.5 or less. Okay. Then we keep adding, add 29, so 49 people, that had a shirt size 16 or less, and we can keep going. Now, hopefully, I'm adding these correctly. We should get 83, and then add the 12, and we get 95, which is also the total of this column here. I'll put that down there. So actually, this cumulative frequency column tells me the total 95 people. But let's use our little four parts method. So I'll do 95 divided by 4. Now, I've got a calculator in S1, so I'm going to use it. I type 95 divided by 4, and it comes up with 95 over 4. Not very helpful. So I want to go SD, and it says 23.75 or 23 and 3 quarters, so that's 23 and 3 quarters, that's like remains of 3, okay, it's 3 divided by 4, it's 3 quarters. So when I put into parts, I'm going to put 23 in each one, and then the remainder of 3, there's 3 left over, well I'm going to put them in these positions here. Okay, so that's going to tell me the lower quarter, point Q1, middle quarter, Q2, or the median, upper quartile, Q3. So there's 23 bits of data, that's the 24th one. Okay, so we have Q1. Here, 23, 20, that's 46, 47, this is the 48th. That's our median, that'd be our Q2. And our final one will be 23, 20, 23, that's 69, 70, 71. So this is the 72th value. Okay. That'll be our Q3. Now we can use our cumulative frequency out to work out where the 24th value is. Right, the third, first three values are 15. The next 17, so up to 20 values, they're not quite the 24th value, they're going to be 15.5. Ah, so there were 49 that were 16 or less. Well, there was only 20 up so far, so the 24th one must be a bit into these 16s. Okay. So it must have been 16. The 48th value, well that actually, the 49th value is 16, so the 48th one must be as well. Okay. And now that we're finding the 72 value for the third quartile, uh, well, yeah, it's definitely past that. It's past the first 49 values. It's not going past this. It must be in this group, so 16.5. Okay, so there's our lower quartile, our median, and our upper quartile. Okay. That's finding the median, lower quartile, upper quartile. I did them first, but we just looked at them in the previous part of the video. Let's move on and see what else they could ask as well. Calculate the mode and the mean, same set of results. Um, well, the mode's quite easy, it's the most common. Well, it looks like if you put these out a massive list, 16.5 wings, there's 34 of them. So make sure you write down quite clearly you're looking at the mode. 16.5. I'll probably put, not put that in a very convenient place because I want to continue my table for a minute. Right, now working out the mean. Now, mean we add them up and divide by how many? Okay. Mm, I want to use another column. So if there was three people at 15, if I was going to add up all those 15s, I could just do 15 times three. Okay. So it's like doing the x times the f column. Oh, that's what we'll call it, shall we? Call it the xf column. Okay. Or you could call it the fx column. It doesn't matter which way around. So that's going to give me 45. And this is where my calculator is going to come in handy. Because if there was 17 and 15.5, I can't work that out in my head. 
263.5. And if we go down, we can fill these in just by simply turning the x and the f all together. And it takes a little bit of time. 16 times 29. 464. Notice I'm taking steady, but it's common mistakes in stats when people rush. Just take these steady. Make sure you're being careful with your calculator. Oh, just got room to fit the last one in. 17 times 12. Oh, I shouldn't know, that's 204. Okay. So these are like the totals of each group kind of thing, and we want to add them up to find the total of all things, and that's what we we use for the mean, then we have a total of everything. So I could forget, well I've got 204 already in the count there, that's plus 561, uh, 464, plus 265, plus 45. Took a bit of time, and with 1,500 You can check that yourself, I might do it wrong, you better check. So, that's the total of everything, now I need to divide by how many there are. Now we saw previously there was 95, and I can get that by adding up the frequency column here. Okay? So I could type in for our me, we've got that value there, and we're going to divide by 95. Whatever you type in calculator, always write down. It's good work and good practice. And I'm divided by 95. Well, I get like 16.18, blah, 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 okay? Um, depends how accurate they want me to go for this one. I'm going to go 3, 6, fix, but I'll put a more accurate answer down here. I'll tell them it's 3, 6, fix. I mean, I could do with a unit. It might be inches with the collar size. And that seems sensible. But when we look at our, our medium was, was 16, so that seems quite... Reasonable. We have got a slightly bit skewed over here that's brought up our mean compared to the median. Okay, so that's our mean. Right, now if we looked at that in general, what a general formula for that would be, and you can write this down on your sheet, we've got a formula, and I think I'll put it on the next slide, there we go. We've got this here. Now let's make sure we understand this. So we've got x bar, which is what we call the mean, so our notation for the mean, and it says this sigma sign, now that sigma sign, as you've seen before, means add up, so you find the sum of, it says sum of fx. I've used xf, I could use fx like I said, so they've added up that column. Oh, add up f of x, f of x, f. just add up that column, that's what I did, and then I divide it by the sum of all the frequencies. Oh, there we go. So remember that sigma sign just means add up them all, sum, and that's a posh way of writing what we did to find the mean. You will need to be able to use that later on in the module. Okay, right, and that's the end of this part of the video.